Within moments, my whole body was filled with disgust and I could not move. Despite not wanting to hear it, the distinctive sound of a woman's voice during a couple's intimate act keeps piercing my ears rhythmically. There's no mistake, right here in our house, Daniel is cheating on me at this very moment. Oh no. The voice through the wall is vivid and something rises from my chest. Feeling sick, I nearly threw up but managed to suppress it with my hand. What should I do? What can I do in a situation like this? As I panic with tears in my eyes, I remember something my mother-in-law, Judy, once said. If you have any problems, please let me know whenever you need help. I shouldn't expose Judy to Herson's infidelity scene. But with no parents of my own, I couldn't think of anyone else to rely on. I frantically called Judy from my phone history. After a few rings, I hear Judy's familiar voice. Hello, Emma. I was just about to. Judy, your son, Daniel's doing a terrible thing. What's wrong? I cut off Judy mid-sentence and exclaimed, I am Emma, a 33-year-old part-time housewife. Last year, I married Daniel, a man of the same age. Daniel works for a well-known local company. He is a so-called delete. It's a bit hard to admit, but we met when Daniel picked me up. After finishing work and having drinks with my friends, Daniel and his buddy approached us as they were also returning from work. Normally, I'd reject a pickup instantly, but that day, my friend and I were tipsy and in high spirits. We thought, why not just drink together? Thanks to the alcohol, Daniel and I hit it off and ended up exchanging contact details. From the next day, when Daniel contacted me, things progressed smoothly and we were regularly dating. He has a high income, a good conversationalist, and not a bad figure. Also, he's experienced with women and his demeanor is always suave. I wondered why such a man was still single at 33. In the countryside here, most people marry in their 20s. It's quite rare to see someone unmarried past 30. Maybe Daniel had no intention of marrying. Or perhaps I was just a fling for him. Although I was somewhat uneasy, I couldn't bring myself to ask. About six months later, Daniel suddenly proposed it was an unexpected moment, and I was thrilled. When I responded, I couldn't help but reveal my true feelings. I actually thought you were against marriage, so I'm surprised, and I'm happy. Then, with tears of joy, Daniel responded without changing his expression. I've been married before, actually. Well, that didn't work out. What? His unexpected reply left several question marks floating in my mind. What do you mean? Didn't I tell you? As I pressed him further, it turned out Daniel was actually divorced. Moreover, he had divorced the day before we met. I became single and then met you right away, Emma. It must be fate. Well, that's... I have no prejudice against divorcees. After all, compatibility varies between people. However, knowing that Daniel approached me the day after his divorce evoked an indescribable sense of distrust. Despite being married, can someone really move on that quickly? More importantly, until now, I had no idea that Daniel was divorced. That's what bothers me the most. It seems Daniel doesn't care much about it but it's important to me. I wish he had told me something this significant before we started dating. Maybe it was obvious how I felt because Daniel looked annoyed and said, What's with that face? You're not going to say you mind that I'm divorced, are you? No, that's not it. I was just surprised. Daniel seemed pleased with my answer and smiled. That's right. You know your place, unlike her. Daniel nodded in agreement. 
her. It must be his ex-wife. I didn't even know her face or name, yet I felt a hostility towards her. What kind of person was she? It's pointless to think about it, but I can't help wondering. Anyway, since we're married, please tell me important things in advance. I know, I just forgot to mention it. Okay. Still harboring some uncertainties, we got married. But less than a month into our marriage, I would regret this decision. Wait, K-giving? Yay! My mom, Judy, is still sharp, but she's getting old, and now she's having trouble walking. Looks like she'll need K-giving soon. When I found out he was divorced, I told him to let me know what was important. I had heard that his dad, Tom, was working away from home, so his mom, Judy, was living alone. But I never knew until now that Judy was lame and needed care. Since meeting Daniel, it's been one surprise after another. I should have at least met his family before getting married. I want to meet and greet before the wedding. My hometown is in the next state, and I'm too busy. Daniel refused, and we settled it over the phone. My parents passed away early, and I accepted his excuse. Could it be that he insisted on a phone greeting because he wanted to keep this fact hidden and marry me? I even began to suspect this. Well, you know, I have to work, and K-giving on weekdays will be tough. That's true. It's hard when you're working. I was relieved. He doesn't intend to make me take care of her. However, then Daniel naturally suggested. So, Emma, you could go part-time, right? What? Part-time work is more flexible, right? You can quit if it gets too much. Besides, I'm the one earning the money. Don't worry about it. What are you talking about? All of a sudden, he informs me about Judy and then tells me to go part-time. And he even made it sound like he was being considerate. That really made me angry. Don't decide things on your own. You never told me about Judy's K-giving. It's one thing if it were in the future, but telling me to go part-time out of the blue is too much. But I earn more. It's not like I can go part-time, right? Can you earn as much as I do? His condescending laugh made it clear he looked down on me. Sure, Daniel earns a good income. Among people our age, he's probably one of the higher earners. There's no way I could earn as much as he does. But that doesn't mean I have to obey everything Daniel says. I bit my lip hard. I told you when we got married to tell me important things. Whether it's about your divorce or the situation now, you always bring things up later. Hey, what? Daniel didn't expect my pushback and clicked his tongue, glaring at me. But I can't just back down. I believe I'm not saying anything wrong. I was going to answer if you asked about the divorce or the K-giving. Isn't it your fault for not asking? Am I supposed to specifically ask if you have a divorce history or if your parents need K-giving? That's right. Even though I said it sarcastically, Daniel nodded seriously. Of course. It's your fault for not doing that. That's absurd. He is too selfish to be excused. But maybe there's some truth to what Daniel says. Maybe I should have asked more about his family beforehand. As I fell silent, Daniel had a triumphant look. Excuses like I didn't hear about it at work or why didn't you tell me won't cut it, right? Well, if you still want to say something, tell my mom yourself. What? Look, we both have the day off tomorrow, so I'll take you to my parents' house. Say it yourself. Mom might be disappointed, though. Daniel then retreated to his room, leaving me alone. Talk to Judy directly. Could I do that? She seemed so gentle over the phone. It wouldn't be hard to refuse if she were unpleasant, but if she turned out to be kind, I might feel guilty. But I have my own life. 
Although we've been married less than a month, I might have to consider divorce depending on how things go. I clenched my fist, resolving myself. The next day, Daniel and I drove to his parents' house. It took about an hour to get there from our house. When we arrived, the house looked like any ordinary home. Daniel confidently unlocked the door and I followed him inside. Mom, we're coming in. Daniel called out and opened the door to the back room. Hello, welcome. Judy was sitting on the bed, smiling and waving at us. Nice to meet you. Sorry about this. I fell and broke a bone recently. Broken bone. Apparently, Judy said she had broken a bone and temporarily needed caregiving. It's frustrating. I want to be able to walk freely soon. Reacting to Judy's words, Daniel turned around. Really, you can walk by yourself. Mom, didn't the doctor recommend a wheelchair? No, I'm just told I need rehab or I might not be able to walk because of my age. I secretly breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed Daniel had misunderstood the caregiving situation. Knowing the truth at his parents' house, we were relieved as we headed home. Judy and I had a chance to talk more slowly later, and she turned out to be a very calm and nice person. I wonder if he's bothering you. That boy, maybe he's like his dad, tends to be self-centered. For better or worse, he's never faced failure in life, so he's overly confident. Daniel has always been full of confidence since we met. I used to think that was part of his charm, but now I see it more as a problem. Did he drag you here against your will today? Are you okay? Judy seemed genuinely concerned about me. No, I'm fine. Thank you. How have you been managing the household tasks? My sister's family lives nearby. They help out when it's absolutely necessary. It takes time, but I can manage to walk if I really try. Judy said with a bashful smile. At first, I would have absolutely hated to work part-time to care for her. Yet, I found myself wanting to help Judy now. I talked to my workplace and switched to part-time. I couldn't visit Judy's house every day, but I made it a point to go there at least once a week. Judy was very apologetic and kept saying I'm sorry to me, to which I only replied, it was my decision. Perhaps having lost my parents early, I saw in Judy something of my own parents. At first, Daniel thanked me, saying, I appreciate you. A few months later, Judy had recovered from her fracture, but then started needing regular physical therapy. Emma, it must be hard coming all this way, right? I'm okay now. My legs are better. Judy tried to show restraint, but she was still unstable on her feet. Moreover, she couldn't drive, so she had to rely on buses or taxis to get to the hospital. Maybe it's overstepping, but I'm worried, so please let me continue to come by often. Emma, thank you. I would visit Judy twice a week. During that time, I would prepare meals in advance and leave them in the fridge for Daniel, instructing him to heat them up himself if I came home late. You're with my mom again. I would have preferred a fresh hot meal today. I'll try to come back early. Daniel would sometimes complain, but that was all I could say. After a few months, Judy's rehabilitation went well, and she was able to walk again on her own. By then, I had grown close to Judy's sister's family, who lived nearby, and we all rejoiced in her recovery. It's all thanks to you, Emma. If you have any problems, please let me know whenever you need help. Thank you. I'll visit again. Daniel really got himself an amazing wife. Judy's sister praised me so much it was almost embarrassing. Maybe I had let my guard down because Judy's rehabilitation was over. 
One day at work, I suddenly felt a terrible dizziness. The room seemed to warp and my head spun. Ideally, I would have liked to hold on until the end of my shift, but it seemed impossible to endure. After talking to my boss, I decided to leave early. I needed to lie down as soon as possible. I managed to get home in a daze. Then I opened the front door and walked in. That's when my eyes widened. There was a woman's bag in the living room that I had never seen before. The word of fear flashed through my mind. Who's the woman? I walked through the living room and down a corridor. Then I heard a noise from the back bedroom. As I tiptoed closer to the door, I didn't even need to open it. I instantly knew what was happening in the next room. Within moments, my whole body was filled with disgust and I could not move. Despite not wanting to hear it, the distinct sounds of a man and a woman in an intimate act regularly reached my ears. Undoubtedly, Daniel was cheating on me right here in our house at this very moment. Oh no. The voice through the wall is so vivid, something rises up in my chest. Combined with feeling sick, I nearly threw up but managed to suppress it with my hand. What should I do? What can I do in a situation like this? As I start to panic with tears in my eyes, I suddenly remember Judy's words. If you have any problems, Please let me know whenever you need help. I shouldn't show her that the scene is her son's affair. But with no parents of my own, I couldn't think of anyone else to rely on. I somehow make it back to the entryway, trembling. I pull out my smartphone and frantically call Judy from my call history. After a few rings, I hear Judy's familiar voice. Hello, Emma. I was just... Judy... Your son, Daniel's doing a terrible thing. What's wrong? I cut off Judy mid-sentence and shouted. Then, while breaking up a bit, I somehow explained the situation. Judy seems to be trying to calm me down, nodding kindly over the phone. What an idiot son. After I finished telling her everything, I could hear Judy sighing deeply on the other end. Judy, I called you like this all of a sudden. I just don't know what to do. It's okay, Emma. I'm coming over right now. Please wait for me. Yes. I hung up the phone feeling a bit calmer. Probably because I was able to talk to Judy. She said she's coming right away, but Judy can't drive. And even if someone from Judy's sister's family drives her, it would take about an hour from their house. I don't know how long Daniel and his affair partner will be in the house. There's no guarantee they'll wait for Judy's arrival. And even if they do stay until she arrives, by then everything might be over and they might tact as if nothing happened. If it was just tea at home, they might say, and that would be the end of it. Without evidence, they could easily talk their way out of it. Then I need to get evidence now. They're in the middle of the act right now. They wouldn't dream I'd come home early from my part-time job. Caught off guard, it should be easy to gather evidence. Okay, let's do this. I take a couple of deep breaths and then head back towards the living room. Just like before, I approach the bedroom door and the vivid voices are audible. Maybe because I'm mentally prepared now. I feel disgusted and uncomfortable, but not as shaken as before. I carefully start the recording on my smartphone. The loud voice of the affair partner should ensure the recording goes well. But this alone might be weak as evidence of the affair. If given the choice, I want more solid evidence. Should I open the door quietly? No, that would definitely alert them. If they notice, it's over. The risk is too high. As I ponder what to do, my eyes catch Daniel's smartphone left carelessly on the living room table. It was Daniel's smartphone. This is a good chance. I quietly picked it up without making a sound. 
The password is, oh, of course. Daniel often didn't lock his phone at home because he found entering the password too bothersome. As expected, it wasn't locked right now. Does he ever imagine I'd look through his phone? Since he hadn't even locked his phone, it seemed he never suspected I'd doubt him about anything as serious as an affair. Could it really be that despite having an affair, his smartphone is left so unprotected? Is this supposed to be a sign of trust? Or does he think I'd never find out? What Daniel is thinking, I don't know. But now, I can look inside his phone. I feel a bit guilty, but just a quick check. I looked through the messages and call history. And there they were, all listed under the name Olivia. Olivia. Could this be the name of the woman he's cheating with? In the messaging app, there were numerous exchanges between Daniel and Olivia that seemed to confirm they were indeed having an affair. As I scrolled through their conversation, I recorded it with my own phone. Okay, that should do it. After checking his phone thoroughly, I placed it back on the table just as the voices from the other side of the door stopped. A surge of tension ran through me. Could it be? If they've finished, either one or both might come out. I tried to hide, but it was too late. Oh my gosh, Emma. Why are you here? Daniel, caught completely off guard and naked, saw me. His mouth twitched nervously. Then from behind him, a woman stretched lazily and peeked out. I could have slept more. Idiot. Olivia, just stay back. Daniel tried to push the woman back into the room, but Olivia, the woman called out by him, was instead trying to come forward. What's up, Daniel? Go to the bathroom quickly. I need to go, too. As she spoke in a flirtatious tone, Olivia looked at me and exclaimed, Hoops. Whoa, is that your wife? May I ask who you are? Ignoring her question, I asked coldly, and Olivia smirked slyly. I'm Daniel's ex-wife, Olivia. Unabashedly in her underwear, Olivia didn't seem embarrassed at all. Even though she must have guessed I was Daniel's wife, she looked at me defiantly as if issuing a challenge. Is this Daniel's ex-wife? Glancing at Daniel, he was only in his underwear, head bowed. Olivia, stop it. Don't make things more complicated. Oh, and Emma, wait. There's an explanation for this. It's not what it looks like. An explanation for coming out of the same room completely naked with your ex-wife during your work hours? Well, that's, um. Daniel just darted his eyes around. What's wrong? Let's hear it. It's not cheating, right? There's a legitimate reason, isn't there? Well, legitimate. That stuff. As Daniel faltered, Olivia raised her voice from behind him. Your wife is terrifying. Why not? It's an affair. No way. That's not okay. Is she really admitting to it just like that? As I grimace in disgust, Olivia laughed as if she was having fun. Just think about it. It's not serious, right? If it's just an affair, he'll come back to you eventually. That's good, right? In other words, she was saying he could cheat all he wants, but in the end, he would safely return to his wife? That's just disgusting, infuriating, and not okay at all. Disgusting. Olivia tilted her head, posing as a puzzled. She looked older than us, but I wondered how old she really was. It's disgusting. Even now, hearing your voices made me feel like vomiting. Seriously, Emma, you've been back for that long. Why didn't you say something? That's sneaky. Unfair. In a panic and visibly upset, Daniel was flustered. Both of them lacked common sense. But unlike Olivia, who was defiant, Daniel seemed to be aware that he was doing something terribly wrong. His mouth moved frantically as if searching for some excuse or something to contradict me. 
though there was no such thing to be found. Having an affair right in our own home was beyond senseless. Moreover, I hadn't even received an apology despite catching them in the act. There was only one path left for me to choose. Please, let's get a divorce. What? Why? Why do you think we shouldn't get a divorce? I can't take this anymore. Please spare me. As I sighed, Daniel glared at me fiercely. What's that supposed to mean, coming from a mere part-time housewife? Who do you think allows you to live so comfortably? In a frenzy, Daniel raised his arm high. This is bad. It's going to hit me. I braced for the impact, but before it could happen, the living room door burst open. It was Judy and her sister's family. Daniel, what are you doing? Tell me now, you idiot son. Oh my God. No way. Daniel let out a small scream and fell on his butt. Mom, why are you and Auntie Mary here? We heard you were acting like a monkey in heat at home. Oh, how shameful. Judy's sister, Mary, yelled, and her daughter and son nodded in agreement. Daniel turned pale at the sight of Auntie Mary, his forehead breaking out in a cold sweat. He was visibly shaken while sitting on the floor, he tried to escape from Mary, but she had a firm grip on the back of his neck. You've always had terrible ways with women. Auntie Mary, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Daniel, usually so arrogant and confident, suddenly shrunk down like a pill bug in front of Mary. Even Olivia seemed scared. Was Mary that frightening? Indeed. Mary was very straightforward, but in the months we had interacted, I never found her scary. I watched, puzzled, until the reason became clear. I'll tell my husband about this. You better start looking for another job soon. At Mary's words, Daniel's complexion changed. What? Auntie Mary, please wait. I beg you. His face turned even paler as he panicked. For some reason, in front of Mary, he began to kneel and bow deeply. That place is my true calling. Please, give me a break. What in the world was happening? As I watched Daniel tearfully, Judy, who had quietly come to stand beside me, whispered in my ear. Actually, Mary's husband is the president of Daniel's company. Really? I exclaimed, my voice cracking in surprise. Turns out, Daniel, who had always been so confident, had gotten his job through connections. He's good at making an impression, but he's not very smart. He barely graduated from college and couldn't secure a job offer from any other company. It seems that Judy's brother-in-law pulled some strings to help him out. Despite all his bragging about his high income, it was shocking to learn he had landed his job through connections. As I was still reeling from the shock, Daniel staggered over to me and said, Emma, this is serious. Auntie Mary won't forgive me. Well, that sounds like you reap what you sow. If this keeps up, best case, I get demoted. Worst case, I get fired. At my age, if I get fired, I won't be able to get into a decent company again. More than his age, it seemed to be Daniel's skills and character that were important. However, I just listened quietly to what Daniel had to say. So, I have a proposal. A proposal? When I asked him to clarify, Daniel nodded, satisfied. Somehow, Auntie Mary really likes you. I mean, you could just ask her to let me keep my job. Daniel declared this as if it was a brilliant idea, which only confused me more. Why should I? Couples are supposed to support each other, right? Don't worry. I'll look for other jobs too. I'll find something soon. No, that's not the point. That's too beside the point. 
It was astonishing how self-centered he could be. Taking a deep breath, I firmly said to Daniel, Daniel and I are getting divorced. We will soon be strangers. As you said, couples should support each other, but I have no intention of spending any more of my life with you. No, look, you loved me, right? That's why you even took care of my mom, isn't it? What a poor loser. Grinning sycophantically, he was practically clinging to me. I just wanted to help Judy. Maybe I saw my own parents in her. Emma. I wanted to be there for Judy. I wanted to give back in a way I never could for my own parents. Judy, even if I divorce Daniel, I hope we can still have tea together. Of course, dear. Judy smiled warmly. Meanwhile, Daniel was looking around nervously. Emma. You're better suited for Olivia after all if you sneak out of work to be with her. Why not just get back together? Good luck to you both. No, I won't accept that. Olivia is good for a fling, but from my last marriage, I know she's not marriage material. I'll follow you wherever you go, Emma. As Daniel declared his intention to stalk me, I was preparing to contact the police when a man I didn't recognize suddenly grabbed Daniel by the shoulder. How pathetic, Daniel. Dad. It was Daniel's dad. I had never met him, so I didn't recognize him. I was supposed to be home for a bit today. I was doing a little work at the company, but your mom told me to hurry over here. Daniel shriveled up even more. You know what you need to do, right, Daniel? Yes, Emma, I'm truly sorry. Daniel was then taken to the back room by his dad, and Olivia was being lectured by Judy in a matter-of-fact tone. After everything, I successfully divorced Daniel. I owe it all to my in-laws and Judy's sister's family. Daniel signed the divorce papers without a fuss, completely cowed. I also managed to secure a substantial amount in alimony. Daniel paid the alimony for both himself and Olivia from his savings in one lump sum. Naturally, Daniel resisted, but once again, the in-laws and Judy's sister's family came to my aid. The amount was unexpectedly large, so I consulted with Judy. He deserves it for what he did. Just take it and don't worry. So I followed her advice. Having lost most of his savings, Daniel now has his finances managed by his parents, who think it's best not to let him handle money anymore given his track record. As for his career, Daniel was indeed fired and reluctantly started working part-time. I heard he's been quite depressed due to the drastic change from his previous job. On the other hand, Olivia has been diligently working as a supermarket cashier. However, the repayment of the alimony Daniel covered for her is being strictly enforced by his parents, making her life quite challenging. Known for her love of shopping and generally being extravagant with money, she has recently had to cut back significantly, which apparently has aged her considerably. Interestingly, her lavish spending habits were reportedly the original cause of their divorce. As for me, I pleaded with my company and am now working there as a full-time employee. I've also resumed living alone. Although Daniel and I are divorced, I still meet regularly with Judy and Mary's family. I'm a divorcee now and have no lingering feelings for Daniel, but I am grateful that I got to meet Judy and her family through him.